Welcome back, I am Sam Crack, and today I'm very excited to be back working on the C6 Corvette Grand Sport. Uh, last time, you guys might remember, there was like a quart and a half of oil left in this engine, and well, the car takes like 10 and a half quarts of oil. So I have no clue whether this thing actually runs or not. My goal today is to hook up everything we can to make sure that the car will run, and oil and fluids won't spew everywhere, and get it started. So let's see if we can make that happen right now. This looked completely like spaghetti beforehand, but it really came together and actually went back really easily, and I have to thank one place for that. I'm sure you've heard me talk a million times about having dealership shop manuals for the cars that you work on, but really, Turbo Mike and I, we started messing around, and we started trying to like test fit some lines here and there, and I said, listen, just stop for a second. Let's hop on the computer. Let's go ahead and let's look at what the shop manual shows us. Because when we look at the diagrams, we're gonna know how to put everything back together, kind of like Legos. It's like a step-by-step -step procedure that the dealerships have. That's why they're able to do these jobs so quick. So anyway, I get my manuals from eManual. If you guys wanna check them out, it's in the description box below. Um, again, it just is a huge time saver. Once we read that manual, we put everything back together in this engine bay in like 25 minutes. So this is pretty standard fare stuff on most cars, but radiator fan, then the radiator, then. The the condenser and then the shroud that went over it um, but we had to hook up the transmission cooler lines to the radiator because of course we don't want to start the car and if the pump gets going uh, then you have transmission fluid all over the floor we've been through that once already on this channel and then the only last thing we have to put in underneath to make sure that no fluids spill out there's an oil cooler now auxiliary oil cooler on the Grand Sport model we're gonna put that in right now So that actually went in really nice. You can see how big that oil cooler is. I mean, look, here's my hand, and it travels all the way across the front. Sometimes you see those small little oil coolers. That looks really nice. That piece from uh, Chevy is like $700. I bought a OEM alternative for 50 or 60 on Rock Auto. So everything is hooked up, and the last thing we've got to do, I just bought this battery brand new, we threw it back here, is put the negative terminal on, which should give us some light, yep, power is on. In the car I can see the switch, uh, there's a green light on on the start stop switch, let's see if this car will run. Oh yeah, I almost forgot, we gotta fill the uh, oil in this car, that would have been a disaster, geez, you get everything ready to go and then don't fill in oil. <laughs> Now notice that the Batmobile is up here somewhere in the frame. <laughs> anyway, you guys are probably gonna like how I had a hard time with that. It's cold out here, and it's not as cold as you guys live in the northern states, but it's cold, and trying to turn that cap all the way was like, we had to heat it up a little bit with the heat gun to get it going. Well, we're ready to go. Let's try and uh, start this car now. It's nice to have that uh, power open back. 
because otherwise I was reaching in side through the cell and pulling that button right there. Oh, let's get in and see what goes on here. I pulled the airbag out. You probably saw that on the floor. Uh, we'll talk about it in a second, but foot here on the clutch and let's see what happens. Um, the whole car just, the power went off to the car and now it's all turning back on again, it looks like. Yeah, well that's strange. The only noise I hear is like static from the radio. Any discs in here? No discs. All right, we'll give it one more shot here. That was really weird. What does it say? Service the fuel system. Huh, low fuel. The air conditioner's turning on now. All right, shut that off, and then we're gonna try this one more time. Foot again is on the clutch, and yeah. So, uh, well, I honestly didn't expect that, although there was no attempt at a crank, so that still isn't pointing to anything catastrophic, at least not yet, with the engine. So we gotta find out why this car isn't cranking. I think we found the culprit. After about 20 minutes searching around in the engine bay underneath the car to see if there was something unplugged. We saw there's a major wiring harness right here. And I came down here and looked and saw these two harnesses were they were tucked in underneath here. This is the dry sump system. And these are major harnesses. These are definitely like computer harnesses. So I'm going, great, we found them. Let's just plug them together. And uh, well, as you can see, those are both female end receivers, meaning these both plug into something. And I'm going, wait a minute. Well, these gotta plug into the computer, or the ECU or the ECM or something. And uh, well, they do. I googled Corvette ECM and I got this picture right here. And let's take a look at what we've got right here. And it's gone. Can you imagine all this? I was super excited. I seriously thought we were gonna get this thing started today and it's missing the main computer that controls all of this stuff. So that's not gonna happen. But let's figure out exactly how we're gonna go about fixing that. And you guys will probably know best. If you have any input about this, let me know in the comment section. But I'm guessing that this thing has to be programmed uh, by the dealership and who knows if they want the whole car there. Let's figure this all out. Right now, Turbo Mike is inside making a few dealership calls to figure out uh, about that missing engine computer. So while we're waiting on that, I wanna show you really quick the airbag in this car. Obviously, like I said, I've taken this one out. Here's the blown one. Here's the good one. We've talked at length about airbags, so we're not gonna go in depth about uh, replacement or anything, even though this car's super easy. Hole on this side, hole on this side, you just basically can stick an Allen key in there and the thing pops out. Anyway. Uh, I went in to process the paperwork on the Domino's DXP car, and I was met with a surprise, something I've never dealt with before. Even though I've rebuilt cars that need airbags replaced, um, they now want an additional piece of information off your airbag, which is totally fine, you know, because you're going to be replacing it anyway. They want the airbag serial number, which I guess you can find on the back there. But I'm pretty sure the reason they want the serial number is they want to check it against the ones that were related in the recent, I think like that Takata airbag recall list. Make sure you're not putting a faulty airbag back in your car. And don't be me, don't be the guy that had to go into the DXP car and take the knee airbag out and the uh, steering wheel airbag back out just to figure out the uh, serial number. That's how easy it is to put a new airbag in a C6 Corvette steering wheel, most Chevy steering wheels as well. All right, so I just was hit with a bunch of information. That missing part is called an ECM, an engine control module. Number one, the fact that it's completely missing off the car leads me to believe it was taken off at the body shop that the car was disassembled at. And it's not necessarily a bad thing that it wasn't on the car because it prohibited anybody from starting the engine. I'm guessing at this point, there's nothing wrong with that engine at all, except for the fact that it needs one of these ECMs. So the dealership wants $430 for a new ECM. And they said the car has to be there along with that new ECM to be programmed at the service department. Now this is where the dealership really earns the badge of this dealership. I asked them, is the service charge gonna be like an hour labor time? Cause that's usually the flat rate, one hour. And to program an ECM, I've seen it done many times. It doesn't take more than two or three minutes, but they still charge you an hour. The gentleman on the phone said, well, it might be more of two hours of service time because we might have to get on the internet. 
and uh, download your VIN specific software. Now, I'm sorry, but that insults my intelligence a little bit because you have to click on a few things on the internet, you're gonna charge me an extra labor hour. I'm sorry, I don't buy it. I'm pretty sure that most dealerships will only charge you an hour. That's why I tend to try and stay away from dealerships when it comes to service. I'm not anti-dealership. They've got a lot of overhead. That's why their prices are higher. But when it comes to these rebuild projects, the more you can stay away, the more money you can save, the more sense it makes because you're rebuilding a car. So next I went on eBay, looked for used ECMs, and I found the best of both worlds. A guy that not only sells you the ECM, he programs it based off of your VIN because he does this for Corvettes and Camaros. He changes the uh, information on it in case you change the gears out or you wanna program it for you know, a modification or something like that. $125 out the door. Something that I thought was gonna be an additional five to $700 tacked onto this rebuild project really was only a buck and a quarter. I can't complain at all. Even though we didn't get the Corvette started, things could have been much worse. For 125 bucks, we're gonna plug that sucker in and I'm pretty confident, at least I'm keeping my fingers crossed here, that it's gonna fire right up. You guys let me know what you think definitely in the comment section below if you have any more insight as to how this works. Maybe you're a Chevy tech or something you know, definitely let me know what you think. Guys, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions as always, email, Instagram, everything you need to contact me is in the description box below. You guys see in the background here, where is it? Right uh, there, somewhere, right there is the Domino's DXP car. I've got the warming oven door back on. That was way more of a hassle than I thought it would be, but this car is uh, pretty much finished as well. And that's what we're gonna talk about next time I make a video. So anyway, till then, see you later.